Hey everyone, welcome back to Eternal Basics. My name is Pojo, and today we are talking about multicolor decks. Now, we've built decks that explore each of the five different colors, and a lot of the different things that those colors like to do. We know that purple really likes sneaky cards, we like red for its aggression, green for its sort of straightforward, no frills, attack with units and weapons strategy, yellow for its difficult to answer threats, and blue for its sort of disruption and control elements. And those are just a couple of the different things that these particular colors can do. But what we've actually seen while we are on the ladder is that most of the decks that we're running up against are two to three colors. And that's because building decks that are multiple colors in Eternal is an extremely strong deck building strategy. I could have actually started off the Eternal Basics uh, list simply by taking two of our decks and mashing it together into a multicolor deck, but I wanted to cover each of the different colors first and cover sort of the basic archetypes before we get into building what is going to be a very competitive deck on the Eternal uh, ladder. So today's topic is, of course, hybridization. And the reason that we want to build decks that have multiple colors is uh, there are, well, multiple reasons. There are four in particular that I'd like to talk about. The first is better cards. So we've already been cherry picking the best cards that we can from the pool that we have and the best cards that we can from our particular colors. By picking from two different colors, we get to pick from a set twice as large, which means that we're much more likely to get the very best cards in Eternal by picking from a set that's so big. You can get extremely high value units and uh, spells and weapons and everything else by picking from uh, a larger pool, and that's pretty important. So you wanna be able to get the best of both colors when we're building a two color deck. The second reason is better synergy and theme. We talked about this a lot in Shadow, but basically being able to access abilities and spells outside of our colors means that sometimes we get to do things that vastly increase the potential value of our deck. I'm talking about things like taking a Channel the Tempest, which uh, is it actually in my overlay, and drawing a bunch of cards with it, then using a card like Excavate to bring it back so that you can draw even more cards with it and deal more damage. There are a lot of ways in which you can find really, really good combos and really, really good synergy and build out a better theme as a result of hybridizing. In fact, most of the different skill words in Eternal are shared between two different colors, which gives you a very easy way of building decks around a particular skill. You can simply pick the two colors that that skill is in, and then that way you can get the best cards in those skills, which is something we're going to be doing today with a Rakano Warcry deck. Uh, the third reason is covering your weaknesses. So fire decks are very, very good at aggression, but they don't really build value very well. They don't have a lot of cards that get you a lot of value on the board. Uh, justice decks happen to do very well on the board, but they tend to be very inflexible and not always have good ways to finish the game. There are a lot of ways in which you can take the weakness of one particular color and cover it with the strengths of another color. And that's a really, really important idea. And the fourth one is the first one again, better cards. So in addition to smashing twice as many of our cards together to get the best of the best, we also get access to hybrid cards. And those cards tend to offer really powerful effects for their power ratio, which is why we're going to be looking at those in particular. All right, let's look at the deck building, shall we? Okay, so we have two different decks here that we've already built that we're going to be putting together to create a better deck that we can run with. And of course, those are the Basics Hand of Justice deck that we built in Eternal Basics number two, and the Basics uh, Fire deck that we built in Eternal number Eternal Basics number one. Uh, both of these decks are very fast and aggressive, and we're going to be keeping that aggression and maybe even making it more aggressive as a result of being able to pick better cards from the pool that we've already got. So. Uh, with this, we're going to be taking these two decks and putting them together to build a Rakano Warcry deck. And let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so one of the things you might remember from when we were talking about Eternal Basics, uh, when we were talking about building decks, is that we went for a specific two drop, uh, Crown Watch Paladin. And uh, I mentioned that this card was tied for best two drop in the game with another card, 
which is Ricano Outlaw. Ricano Outlaw. Ugh. Now, both of these cards are extremely good two drops with War Cry that have different evasive abilities. When we put them together, we're going to have a very, very fast and early, fast early game that tends to be very focused around War Cry. And we happen to really like War Cry cards, so we're going to be putting a lot of them into this deck to centralize the theme around that idea. Uh, in addition to Crownwatch Paladin Rakano Outlaw, we also have Oni Ronin, which is the best one drop War Cry unit in the game. I think it's the only one drop unit that has War Cry in the first place. Um, and finally, there's one card that we're going to be adding in, which is an uncommon called Sword of Akaria. This is a card that I actually recommend as a first craft for people who are uh, just getting started in the game. As a 3-2 removal, it's a 3-2 relic weapon that has War Cry, so when you attack with it, you get the War Cry. But uh, the benefit that it has as both a removal spell and also a possible way of ending the game if your opponent is not playing units uh, is quite good. And this card is really, really good for uh, what it offers you in terms of uh, power. And this is one of those examples of how hybrid cards can be very, very strong uh, for the cost that they offer. Most hybrid cards are going to offer you a lot of interesting extra strength uh, by simply being hybrid cards, and that's uh, going to be an important idea that we express. Okay, so this is our sort of central Warcry theme, and this is going to make up a pretty decent portion of the deck. Uh, once we have this, we're going to want to add in some cards that we've already included from previous decks, uh, most particularly Gilded Glaive, which is an extremely good weapon that we can put on a lot of different stuff. Uh, we want to add in Elder's Feather, which is a 1-1 card that is not all that strong on its own, but happens to be really good in a Warcry-focused deck, because when it builds up that extra power, it becomes a very cheap piece of wep weaponry that happens to allow uh, your stuff to fly over for a lot of damage. And if you get a bunch of war cries on it, it becomes extremely efficient for its power value. A one cost one one is mm, okay for a weapon, but if you make it even a two two or a three three, this is already becoming an extremely good weapon to be putting on one of your units. So that's something that we want to include. Uh, in addition, we have cards like Ornate Katana, which uh, we talked about before as being an extremely good common weapon. We're going to go ahead and run in as many as four of these. We're going to focus this deck around weapons a little bit more in addition to that Warcry theme. And uh, finally, we could run things like Crown Watch Longsword, but um, I think what I'm going to go here for here is another hybrid card called Morning Star, which is an uncommon weapon at four that gets a plus four, plus three. The stats on this are mostly okay, but uh, as far as things go, it's a pretty good card to sort of finish off people late, especially if you don't get the war cries that you need. So we'll include two of these as an option. Okay, so now we've got like a pretty good set of weapons and a pretty good set of units. We also need to focus in some removal, and uh, we know that red has one of the best removal spells in the game, Torch. Deal 3 damage for 1. This card's very efficient at getting rid of low power threats, and it's going to allow us to get across with all of our early stuff a lot easier. Uh, however, if we do end up getting blocked by something that Torch can't get, we happen to be able to cover that weakness with a card called Vanquish, which uh, we've talked about as well. This card kills a unit with 4 power or more, and uh, if we have plenty of these, we can get rid of really, really big threats that are getting in the way of our Warcry units and that our Torches can't deal with. So that's going to help us out quite a bit as far as the removal stuff goes. Okay, what else do we want to run in here? Uh, we have one Pyro Knight, which is a rare, but it is a card that exists in our basics deck. So let's go ahead and get the Pyro Knight in here, since it's a very good one drop and uh, it happens to function very well with War Cries. Uh, I think that's going to be a pretty solid include. Another rare that we can get in here that we have one of from our green deck is Valkyrie Enforcer. And if we include that in, then we're going to be in pretty good shape on that front. We still need ways to end the game late. Um, not too many more, but I'm going to go ahead and include the Stone Scar Maul from our red deck. And that'll allow us, uh, if that gets enough War Cries on it, it's going to be a way that we can simply punch through and end the game very, very quickly. So I think that that's something that we're going to want in there. Uh, finally, let's run some more units here. We'll throw in the Silverwing Familiars, 
this card, of course, is extremely good at carrying weapons, and we happen to have a lot of good weapons for it to carry, uh, both the red ones and the green ones. Uh, we have cards like Morningstar, we have uh, the Ornate Katanas, the Gilded Glaives, the Elder's Feathers. There's a lot of stuff that Silverwing Familiar is going to be really happy to have. And cards with Aegis are particularly good with weapons, so we're going to be very excited about building that out. Okay, we're at 45 out of 50 so far. Um, there are a couple of more spaces. I'd like to fill that with a little bit more removal, so let's go ahead and put some piercing shots in. Eh, let's go with two here. And what else? Uh, I would like to fill out the two drop slot a little bit more. This deck needs to be just a bit more aggressive, so we're going to include the Crown Watch Commandos from our Hand of Justice deck. And they'll be pretty good with the weapons as well. They have very good synergy with the weapons, and all of this is put together... Uh, all of this fits together pretty well. All right, we're at 50 out of 50. We're going to do one last thing here. Now that we're through the first five of our basics lists, we're going to go ahead and go into options, hit the gameplay button. And if you have smart auto pass on, I suggest turning it off. But what we're actually going to do here is enable advanced deck building. This allows us to use side decks, which we don't care about too much, but it also allows us to use custom power bases. And now we can actually see our power base here. So we've got Fire and Justice Sigils, and we have this card called Seat of Glory, which uh, is a hybrid power that comes into play depleted unless you have a sigil in your hand. We like these hybrid cards a lot. They allow us to fix for our power in ways that are extremely beneficial to us. Um, there are other ways that we want to fix our power, and I recommend getting a hold of these uh, whenever you can. Don't be too stressed out if you don't have them yet, but they're pretty easy to craft. First off, Rakano Banner, which is a four of common. We're going to include that instead of two Justice Sigils and two Fire Sigils. This is depleted unless we have a unit, but we happen to have a lot of cheap units to play, so Rakano Banner should be a great way to fix our power. And we're also going to include a card called Diplomatic Seal. And I'm going to talk a lot more about power fixing in a later video, but for now, we just want to make sure that we have as many different ways to get red and green as we can. So we'll cut those out, and then we'll have 75 out of 75 again. Uh, our power should still be at 25, which uh, should be fine, because as you can see, our curve actually terminates at uh, 4 here. So we basically have one card at 6. So we'll be okay on 25 power, but we're going to talk about that a lot more in an upcoming video of Eternal Basics. So for now, this is our Rakana Warcry deck, and we're going to talk, we're going to play with this deck quite a bit. Now, the thing about this deck is that right now, what we have built, I can tell you, is competitive on the ladder. And it's very likely that you could get to master with this deck if you are playing very well and if you're playing often enough. I think this deck actually has the potential to get up the ladder and make it all the way up to the highest echelons if you need to. So this is something that you can actually play with and do well with in Eternal. This is not just demonstrating a concept. This is something that is powerful enough to be competitive. Uh, we'd swap a few of these cards for some rares in particular. Uh, Morningstar is not particularly strong. Uh, but Crown Watch Commando is eh, sort of okay. So there are a couple of cards here that could be removed and slotted in. You could make changes to this deck based on the meta, but if you are actually adapting well enough to the meta, this is the kind of deck that can actually win a lot of games. And we're doing it all with mostly commons and uncommons. So that's a testament to how strong hybridization can be, and also how strong having a very, very good theme can be. Anyways, let's play the deck and demonstrate its power to you uh, for ourselves. And let's go ahead and name it. Uh, so the official name for decks like these is Rakano Pants, which is to say they uh, have so many weapons that they, they just put down units and they put pants on them. And uh, that, so that's what we'll call it. Uh, it is a war cry deck with weapons, and uh, so we usually go with the Pants deck. Anyways, let's get into, into a game. All right, we're up against Quid Nunk. Uh, our opening hand has a one drop and a two drop. That's probably enough for me to keep it. Uh, we have kind of a tricky situation here where we, our three drops are not really playable due to the double green influence requirement. 
And uh, this is something that is uh, pretty likely to happen in early decks. We're going to keep this hand anyways, though. So with hybrid decks, you do run more of a risk of not having the influence colors that you require. And that level of unreliability is sort of the weakness of hybrid decks where the strength is that you get you know, to pick from a larger pool of cards, and you get to pick cards with a lot better synergy with each other. It looks like I'm playing up against another Rakano deck, so we're going to have a Rakano Mirror match. Being first here is quite important. It allows me to get those early war cries in and uh, sometimes force them into pretty bad trades. So we'll see if that's what happens. I'm guessing I'm going to get an attack here. I'm pretty happy keeping uh, my Crown Watch Paladins guarded, since my Crown Watch Paladins have Aegises as well. Alright, and we get a Rakano Outlaw, which is not a bad card here. This card is a little vulnerable to Torch, and I'd very much expect Torches from Rakano Warcry decks. Pretty much every Rakano Warcry deck runs four Torches. I'm just going to attack with these two. I'm going to play down a Silverwing Familiar and see if we can bait out a Torch. Because if we can, then Valkyrie Enforcer and Rakano Outlaw get a lot better. And if we can't, then we still get to, you know, like play Gilded Glaive on it, and uh, that's always a good play. The 2 2 swinging in, getting its War Cry. Very, very scary. Navani War Singer is not a very common card in Rakano War Cry decks uh, because it tends to be more mid range, it's not as fast of a card. Uh, I'm pretty happy to just silence that right now. And then we can play one power here. Uh, Gilded Glaive looks okay. I'm not super psyched about it. I think I'd rather just attack in. And because we can't attack with our Oni Run in this turn, we'll probably use it to block uh, the Crown Watch Paladin if the Crown Watch Paladin attacks, but I think that's not likely. No, oh, well, okay. I was wrong. We will go ahead and block there. That's a two-for-one trade for me, and I also get rid of an Aegis that would probably be pretty problematic. So I'm pretty happy with that uh, play. I think that that was probably a mistake on my opponent's part. If he had put the Warcry on the Navani Warsinger, then he would have been able to attack in for five, and I would have had to double block it in order to get rid of it. Um, but he got double Warcries out of it, so it's not a complete loss for him. There are reasons that he might have wanted to play it that way. Anyways, I'm going to Gilded Glaive here. That puts me with 8 in the air, and the cards that I'm drawing are looking pretty strong as well. Alright, Fire Sigil. Uh, my opponent may be out of gas. Not quite. Looks like he has a Stone Scar Maul. Uh, very good card for getting rid of Aegis creatures, of course, and uh, an inclusion in our own deck, so we're quite fine with seeing that. Ornate Katana looks pretty good here since it puts the extra 5, and as you can see, the War Cries make Sword of Akaria a much more powerful card than it seems because the additional stats make it quite disgusting. Pretty happy to use this to kill Navani Warsinger. If Warsinger were not on the board, that would be lethal for us, so we'd be pretty happy about that. Looks like uh, we finished off our opponent, so yeah. Not too bad of a demonstration of uh, Rakana War Cry. Let's go ahead and go to the Postmortem. So Rakana will never die. Uh, you're going to see this deck from the very start of Bronze to the upper echelons of Master. This is a deck that everyone can run and is fairly cheap and easy to build and is just uh, really quite powerful just based on the hybridization of it. Like, we are able to co cover multiple bases. We get rid of little creatures early on with Sword of Akaria and Torch. We get rid of big creatures later with cards like Vanquish and uh, Stone Scar Maul. We have the ability to build up a lot of aggressive, uh, red-focused, attacking-based strategy that's really, really aggressive and wants to kill your opponent very fast and tends to make a really big impact on the board very fast. But at the same time, we also have that unit-focused uh, weapon-type bonus, uh, just this really, like, big, tough unit focus of green, which means that our deck is a lot more resilient than your traditional mono-red deck or your traditional aggro deck like we built in Eternal Basics 1. So all of this comes together to build a deck that's very well-rounded, very consistent in its theme, 
and with a lot of good synergy between cards. So if when we put all of that together, we have a deck that's just much, much stronger as a result. And there are the drawbacks, of course. Like, you do have that level of extra unreliability with influence. You have a higher chance of just drawing dead and maybe not getting to play out your perfect hand every single game. But you'll usually make up for that with the reliability and the strength of your deck uh, due to putting together just the best cards from two different sets. And so I think that that's something that you should definitely focus on. And when you're building out early competitive decks in Eternal, when you don't have a lot of cards to work with, one of the best ways that you can make a deck good is to just take two colors that you really like, smash them together, and make sure that you pick the best cards from each. If you do that, there's a pretty good chance that what you build is going to be strong enough to compete and to do well on the ladder. So that's what I'd like to leave you with today. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments how I did, what I can do better. All of that helps me, of course, tremendously. In the meantime, I've been Pojo. Uh, we will be back again with another Eternal Basics video soon, and thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night.